Hey there, so today we're going to go back to where I first started when I was programming professionally and that would be with Windows 3.1 and Visual Basic 3. So, I've installed, oops I can't spell properly, I've installed a copy of VirtualBox and uh, a copy of Windows 3.1 and I'm just going to start this up. Okay, so this is actually on my spare MacBook. I don't use my uh, working one to do the YouTube stuff just in case I ever do something silly and I end up ruining my work computer. So it's all done on here. So you'll notice the first thing that happens is we're actually dropped at a DOS prompt. And that was because Windows was a GUI back in these days that sat on top of DOS. So we have to type win to start it. Ooh, that's a lot faster than it used to be when I was a kid. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize all this out of the way. So what have we got here? We have a copy actually you know what i'm gonna go full screen uh, that way there we go right so what we've got here is windows 3.1 and uh just to give you a quick tour it's uh basically this is your desktop the program manager is actually an executable and you can probably see the executable inside the file manager uh, okay let's maximize this and maximize the window inside so yeah, this Pogman EXE, this is what's actually running the desktop. And there used to be a prank we used to do when we were younger where you know, you'd take Pogman, rename it something else, and then take something, for instance, like calculator or whatever, and rename that Pogman. So that every time somebody's computer started, the only thing they would have is a calculator or a clock or something like that. Yes, how the time used to fly by. So yeah, I'll give you a quick tour of some of the Easter eggs. If I hold down Shift, Control, and Alt, and go to Help. Oh yeah, of course the menus don't work unless you hold down the mouse key. Got all about that. Okay. So if I, still holding down those keys, double click in the left corner here where it's red, and then hit OK, and then go and repeat, oops, repeat this a second time, holding down the mouse. This time we're gonna get one of three characters. Oh no, the three characters come up in a second. So yeah, there's three characters inside Windows 3.1. You've got Bill Gates, a bear, and some man with a bald head. And I, yeah, don't, I don't know who the bald man is, but anyway, uh, they come up with the credits. So here's the first, uh, part of the credits and we're going to repeat this process a third time and oh we've got Paul Allen I don't remember Paul Allen ever being in there huh interesting I wonder if we do it a fourth time does it show somebody different I can't remember if it keeps going or not no it doesn't okay all right so once you've triggered that you will start to see things happening Oops, if I go to here there we go You'll start to see things happening in other places. Uh, so if I go to fonts, this area down here will now be triggered probably to show bear exe. So I get, yep, here we go. So it's showing a preview of what the font was like. And you'll see here bear exe. That was the bear that was in Windows, which you know, we didn't get this time. Actually, you know what? Let me just uh, restart Windows and see. Oh, of course, yes, you can't quit it that way. You have to type it. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to end Windows and of course I didn't install DOS key so I'll just type that again. Right, let's trigger this again and we'll see, oh cool, I've got to hold that down. So double click there, okay, go back in, uh, double click, go back in a third time. Who do we get this time? Oh, we got the bald man. Okay, all right. And uh, yeah, so anyway, long story short, it was a pretty abysmal operating system, but it's what we had back in those days. Like for instance, here's how bad the calculator is. Uh, calc. So if I do 3.11 and take away 3.1, I should be left with 0 0.01, but I'm left with zero. Yes, it's uh, great. <laughs> So uh, as I said, I've installed Visual Basic 3. Let's start this up. Uh, Visual Basic 3, oh, oh wow, it's so monochrome, it's unreal. Uh, let me just minimize the program manager out of the way and just rearrange things a little bit so we can see what we've got here. Uh, so yeah, this is where I first started programming on Windows and it was, it was actually a hotel in London that I first went to a seminar where they were teaching us how to use it. And I remember every morning at 10 o'clock on the dot, Speedbird, well, Concord, as everybody else would know it, would come down the uh, runway and the entire hotel would vibrate violently. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, quite, quite a funny thing to have. You know, the people on stage would have to stop at 10 o'clock on the dot for about one minute whilst the entire hotel went through an earthquake. <laughs> so, all right. Um, 
what we've got here, this is back in the days of uh, uh, VXDs. No, what, what did they call these things? V VBXs? Oh, actually, it's written on the right-hand side. Yes. So what we've got here is a toolbar with certain things on it, and these things are like plugins to Visual Basic. So if you bought the standard version, you had everything that was at the top here down to, I believe, about as far as this picture icon. Yeah, that, that would be right, because the next item after that, actually no, maybe it was a bit before that, because, hang on, is that, of course, we've got no tooltips in these days, so that might be the multimedia control, so maybe it went as far as the line, anyway, it was around halfway that it would go down if you had the standard version of Visual Basic, and I believe this one's the professional, uh, does it say, it doesn't say, but... It, this one is the professional with a higher up version and the reason I know that is because it's got this data control and that was like a, an extra that you had to purchase. So you've got this form on this side and so let, let's just quickly do a quick simple app. So we're going to change the caption and so we're going to call it uh, my, oops can't spell, wonderful application. And we're going to rename the form and we'll call it form main. So we go down to name. Here it is. Change this to frm main. And if I was to just run this as is, here is my wonderful application. Like it's it's not very exciting. So we'll close that out. And now let's drop a quick button. And so the name of this will be button test. And we're going to change the caption of the button to press meet and let's just drop a quick label on here and we will call this uh, oh so this is the uh, label so I am a label oh can't spell I am a label 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 okay right go to here LBL test label Right, so it's got a name. Both things have a name, both things have a caption. So if I now double click my button, we're in the event that's behind the button that the code is gonna run when that button is clicked. So if I do me dot, and you'll notice here, this is so old, there's not even any sort of prompting as to what the things are that you could be typing. There's, there's no uh, uh, you know, autocomplete or anything like that. This is very, very early days, this is. So me dot LBL, uh, I can't see if my camera thing's in the way. <laughs> Let me just move this out of the way so I can see it. Okay, LBL test label. There we go. Uh, dot caption equals button pressed. Okay, come out of there, run the app. Oops, can't see. There we go. So if I do this, yay, it works. And that was literally how simple Visual Basic 3 was. Um, you know, there's not really too much more to it other than that. Uh, the, there was a package manager that allowed you to be able to package up your applications. And actually, one of the funny things about Visual Basic 3 was it was one of the last of the Visual Basics where the application that was compiled was pretty much an all-in-one item. And, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, this is my son in the background. Uh, you know, he just decided to walk in while I'm recording. <laughs> uh, yeah, so where was I? This is one of the last versions of Visual Basic where the executables that you compiled didn't really require anything in the way of baggage. Like, you li literally could stick it on a floppy disk, go take it to another computer, copy it, and it would just run. Uh, like, you know, these were proper executables. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing how that would work. That is Visual Basic 3. Very, very simple, uh, you know, compared to what we have in this day and age, it was, uh, yeah, exceedingly simple. But, you know, having said that, this is where I cut my teeth. Uh, this is, you know, where I did a lot of my work in the early days, especially during the 90s. Um, so, yeah, let me just come out of here now. Uh, do we want to save? No, no. And we'll go back in here. So, yeah, so every lunchtime I would sit there and go through this. Now, this is the documentation for how Windows works, pretty much. Back in those days, it was a lot simpler than what it is these days. Uh, you know, I think the, the big thing in Windows 3.1 that they put in, if I remember rightly, was this OLE stuff. Uh, so, you know, the idea that you could drop a spreadsheet into a Word document and then double click it and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, the, the entire the entire SDK or software development kit, I read through this documentation every lunchtime. 
and you know, this is how I learned how to do things. You know, if you wanted to open a file, this is the code that you had to call. And so I would learn how to do it in Visual Basic. And my first ever Windows app that I actually had sold, it was a memory compactor. And so if we go to memory management functions, uh, global compact, here we go. So this one function, it says here that it rearranges memory uh, currently allocated to the global heap so the specified amount of memory is free. Uh, if the function cannot free the requested amount of memory, it frees as much as possible. So the idea was if your computer was slowing down and it was running out of uh, heap memory, I would just go and request like you know, five or 10 megs of uh, RAM, whatever I could detect your computer had. And it would cause Windows to basically panic, compress everything down, and bingo, you suddenly got some memory. Uh, so yeah, we sold it for, I think it was like 25 pounds a pop. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, people loved it. It did what it was supposed to do. And uh, yeah, so that was my very first Windows app. So I stayed in Visual Basic for a number of years. I went through version 3, then version 4. And version 4 was different from 3 because A, it was 32-bit. And also, secondly, all of those various windows that we had, like the palettes and stuff, they all sort of got pulled into one big window with uh, sort of panels and things. Then we went through Visual Basic 5, which allowed you to create components that could be dropped into other Visual Basic applications. Then we got up to version 6, and that was the last of the, uh, the sort of 32-bit uh, uh, you know, classic Windows Visual Basic. After that, it went to .NET. And of course, from .NET, it then went up to 64-bit, and you know we had universal Windows apps, and you know all, all of the other stuff that came along with it. So yeah, this is where I started. It's um, you know a long time ago. I mean, how how old is this? Does it have a date on it? Oh yeah. So th this this stuff was uh, stopped in '93. So after Windows 3.1 was Windows for Workgroups, which was 3.11. But really, like Windows for Workgroups was just Windows 3.1 with networking enhanced. Um, yeah, you know, as you'll notice, there, there's nothing in the way of internet on here. Uh, I think the closest you might get is there's, there should be a terminal. Where's it going to be? You're probably under applications. Yeah, so the, there's a terminal window. So th this was your internet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like there's really not a lot to it. I mean, you'll recognize some of this stuff. Uh, actually, does this have NYV on it? Uh, game start main. Can't see. There, there was actually a Microsoft antivirus on here. Yeah, there, there actually was a antivirus. Uh, what's under games? <laughs> oh, okay, Solitaire and Minesweeper. Uh, startup. Oh, this was a, a fun thing. So, let's imagine you wanted to start something up every time Windows started. Let's say you wanted your clock to appear. So you just drag it out of here into here. Let's close down Windows. Yep. Now, when Windows starts, anything that's in there would automatically start. So there's your clock. And what a wonderful clock it is too. Let me just put that back into that group. Okay. Um, yeah, so we had this Microsoft antivirus thing that I, I don't know it actually did anything. Did it do anything? It was uh, pretty terrible. Um, main, is it in there? Control panel, no. You know what, let me see if I can find it. It was NWAV. MSD. Mine, paintbrush, maybe it's in system. Yeah, I, I can't seem to find it. One thing uh, that the geek people will notice is things like user GDI and kernel. They're actually EXEs, not DLLs. So yeah, here's the 286 version and the 386 version of the kernel. And there's GDI that does all the graphics. So yeah. This version of Windows was so old, oh wow, they actually dropped the fonts into the system directory. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very simple in comparison to what it is this, in this day and age. So um, yeah, so that's a quick trip around. Uh, oh, here it is, MWAV. I've just found it. Yes, even though it's in the DOS directory, it's the Windows app. So this was Microsoft Antivirus. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. This is an absolute trip down memory lane. Yeah, so we used to have to run this on a regular basis. I guess I had it dropped into my uh, startup group somewhere. Uh, but yeah, so this was what we had to run to check for viruses on our floppy disks back in those days. It was uh, pretty terrible. It didn't really pick up much. And uh, yeah, if you needed a CD-ROM or something like that, you had to load drivers. I haven't set up the auto-exec bat and the configs and the uh, uh, stuff to be able to load the MSC-DEX driver. 
Uh, actually, is that even installed on it? Oh yeah, it is, there is, MSC Dex. So yes, um, that is the trip around Windows 3.1 and Visual Basic 3. A uh, bit of a trip down memory lane. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like these videos, then uh, please hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing and speak to you soon. All right, thanks, bye.